Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars, and you're watching another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. If you like to build or repair guitars, I suggest you click that subscribe button down below, and you'll become part of a community of fellow luthiers, and together, we can take your skills to a whole new level. If you'd like to support my guitar building YouTube channel, visit eGuitarPlans.com and buy a plan. A link is in the description below. Now on with the video. Today I'm going to talk about the counter that I'm going to be using with my CNC pickup winder. And specifically, the counter that I purchase is the Sestos C3E-R-24. Sestos makes a bunch of different kinds of counters, and in that C3 family they offer a number of different versions that are differentiated by how you supply power to them as well as the type of switching they have internally. And the one that I purchase is the Dash R-24, which is designed to work with a 12 to 24 volt AC to DC power supply. And I just happen to be using a 12 volt, five amp AC to DC power supply for my entire winder. So that works perfectly with uh, my power supply system. And the reason why I chose this particular counter aside from the power supply is the features it has. First of all, it's fully programmable. So I can program it set up to match the uh, winder that I'm building. And then I can also program it to count a specific number of counts. That in turn is linked to uh, another reason why I purchased this counter, and that is the fact that it has a built-in relay switch. So when the number of counts reaches the pre-programmed setting that I've been put into, into the counter, a, an internal relay will switch from normally closed to normally open. So hypothetically, what I can do is I can wire my power supply through that relay. And when the counter reaches a specified number of counts that I've programmed into it, that relay switch will disconnect the power to the winder and shut it off. So in, you know, as an example, I could program in, you know, say 5,000 turns. And when I hit the, uh, or send the G code to the winder, the winder will start spinning, the counter will start counting, and when the counter reaches 5,000 counts, that relay will automatically shut off the winder and I'm done. Well, in testing, that worked perfectly. Well, I shouldn't say perfectly. It worked. It worked, but there was a little bit of an issue. And as I'm about to demonstrate, if you're really sharp-eyed, I think you'll see what that issue is. But then I'll explain what the issue is and how I solved it. So check this out. Setting the counter for a specified number of counts is really easy. I just have to advance the set value until I reach the number I want to do, which in this case will be 500. Then I'll uh, head over to my laptop and send my G code file to the winder, which in turn starts the winding process. And as you can see, the counter, the upper display, is showing the number of turns as that winder is spinning the bobbin. And then once it reaches 500, the internal relay will switch off power to both the winder motor as well as the traversing motor, and everything comes to a stop. Then I just return to Universal G-Code Center, cancel out the remaining G-Code that's being fed into the Arduino, and I'll hit a soft reset just to clear the memory. Okay, if you were watching closely, you'll notice that when the counter reached 500 counts and the power was cut to the winder, the bobbin continued to spin for about one to one and a half seconds. So it went from 1200 RPM down to zero in that span of time. And I was actually able to use the counter. I was able to program it to tell me how many extra turns it was putting on that bobbin after it had reached 500. And I, did, I made that test several times and it always came out to 17 extra turns or 17 extra counts. Now on a, on a humbucker bobbin, 17 extra counts is gonna put about 15 ohms of extra resistance on the bobbin. That's really no big deal. In fact, you could probably just ignore that. Or if you wanted to get technical, you could 
total, you know, take your, your turn count that you're going to program into it and subtract 17 from it so that you get the exact number you want. However, this being a CNC winder, I really wanted to have this, the, the counter shut off the winder at exactly 500 or, you know, 5,000 counts, whatever, and the bobbin would stop immediately because since this is a DC brushed gear motor, it should stop as immediately as soon as the power's cut. Well, I checked the power supply as it was flipping the, the um, relay switch from normally closed to normally open, uh, and I used a voltmeter on it, and it what it does is when it switches, instead of the voltage immediately cutting off, you know, from 12 volts to zero, it drains from 12 volts down to zero in the span of about one and a half seconds, hence the extra turns on that bobbin. So I had to figure out a better way to wire it. And what I ended up doing was I contacted Sestos, who made the counter, as well as Cytron, who makes the DC motor driver that I'm using. And I showed them my wiring diagram and asked them for some suggestions on how to do this. And Sestos came back and said, why don't you just wire the signal, the PWM signal, from the G-Shield that's attached to the Arduino, wire that through the relay and then to the motor control so that when the relay flips, the signal will be cut to the motor driver. Well, I thought, no, that's not gonna make that much difference, but I'll try it. And it worked, <laughs> it worked perfectly. Now, when it reaches 500, the motor stops instantly. And unfortunately, I don't have any video sh demonstrating that. However, in the next episode, I should have the counter completely finished because as you can see, I've made a lot of progress on assembling it. I should be able to show you how that works now with the, um, the signal from the uh, PWM going to the driver going through the relay. It, it'll shut off a lot faster. Now, one thing you'll notice is the disc that I'm using to mount the bobbin on, it's a piece of black acrylic cast plastic and I actually cut this on my CNC machine and the reason I went with black is because I'm using a photo optical sensor to read the windows that are cut in this disc in order to trigger the counter to advance one count with each turn. Now you'll notice that this disc has two windows cut on opposite sides. And you may be wondering, well, logic would dictate that that's going to count twice as it turns. However, that's another nice feature with this counter. Since it's programmable, I'm able to tell it just to count one window as it's turning. Now, the reason I cut the two windows is for balance. When you're spinning a bobbin, which is an oblong shape, filling up with wire and starts to develop weight, balance becomes an issue. And if I were to only cut one window into this disc, it's not going to be in balance. So as a result, when you're spinning at you know, upwards of 1,000 RPM or more, this disc can be spinning slightly out of balance. That can affect tension and it can cause some issues with how the winder performs. So by cutting the two windows, I keep the disc in balance as it's spinning and that takes out that issue of, of balance being a concern. So that's the reason why I have the two windows cut into this disc. Now the sensor that I'm using is a photo optical sensor and what it has is two legs. And in one leg there's a tiny little LED and in the other there's a sensor. So when the window is between the sensor legs, the sensor can detect that LED and it will send a signal to the counter which increases the count by one. When it's interrupted by the disc, it can't send a signal. So that's kind of, if you can imagine that, that's how the counter or the sensor advances the counter. And the reason why I chose to use a photo optical sensor as opposed to a different type of sensor, such as a magnetic sensor like I used on 
my pickup winder number five is because the photo optical sensor is much more sensitive and more accurate at really high speeds. The magnetic sensor works fine if you're under a thousand RPM, but when you start to go above that, it starts to drop counts. So I wanted something that was going to be able to count reliably and accurately from a thousand RPM all the way up to, you know, you can, if you want, you can wind at 3000 or 4000 RPM, which I know is what some guys like to wind at. You know, when they're doing a lot of bobbins, they want to get them done fast and they want a counter that's going to count accurately at that high speed. And the photo optical sensor will do that. The other nice thing about the photo optical sensor is it's cheap. I think this one cost me two bucks. So uh, really affordable way to count and to count accurately, especially with this particular counter. All right, guys. Well, that's all the time I have for this episode. And... As you can see, the, the assembly is going really f well with this winder, and I should have it done in the next day or so, and I can start to test it and see how it's going to work. So hopefully in the next episode, this winder will be completely finished. I can give you a quick tour of it and demonstrate how it works winding a pickup bobbin. So until then, as always, if you have any comments or questions, post them down below, and I'll try to do my best to answer them. But as I said before, with this particular topic, this CNC winder, I have to be somewhat judicious in the information that I put out there because I'm not 100% sure this is going to work the way I hope it will. And I don't want to put information out there that's going to steer people into the wrong direction. That's something that will hopefully come later on. But when I demonstrate this, I'm hoping to walk you through my workflow from the front end to the back end, with the front end being all the work that I have to do on the computer to write the G code and do all that. And then on the back end is the actual winding process. So uh, we'll see how that goes. And in the meantime, you know, if you've stumbled onto this video and like watching videos on building guitars and winding pickups and you know, all that stuff, everything that's connected to it, be sure to hit the subscribe button. If you don't already subscribe, click the bell for notification, which I put up a video twice a week. Uh, you'll get notification each time that happens. And um, as always, if you want to show my channel some support, because I don't make a lot of money from YouTube making these videos, and I love making these videos, uh, head over to eGuitarPlans.com and purchase a plan for a guitar or one of the tools I use, including pickup winder number five, which in the future, if this works out, I'm going to also add an assembly manual for pickup winder number six, the CNC winder. So you'll be able to choose depending on which one you think would work best for you. Anyway, purchasing a plan there helps to fund what I do and keep me uh, buying better microphones and better camera equipment so that I can improve the quality of the video. So uh, until the next episode, take care and I will see you soon. <laughs>